Hey everyone, welcome back. If you notice, I did speed this up a little bit. It's at two times the speed. Um, and I just did that so it's a little bit easier to edit. <laughs> um, so basically I just wrapped the it around the stone and made sure it was nice and snug and then cut it, made sure the edges are matching and now I'm just soldering it. Um, it didn't exactly solder correctly, so I am using the little screws there to kind of pull it apart and then bring it back together. And then obviously quenching it, making sure we can touch it and not burn ourselves. That's always fun, right? Making sure it matches that stone. We want to make sure it sits in there nice and snug. Um, sometimes I like to turn the stone over. I did not do that with this one. Um but sometimes turning that stone over and doing it on the other side makes it so it really matches up nicely and doesn't come out wonky at all. And here I'm just trying to decide what I want to do for the design. Um, I really was going into this thinking that I was going to do a lot more design work than I did. So, I don't know, I kind of ended up doing a, an easier, smaller design, but I really like it. Um... I, I was going to do more to it, and then once I saw, like, how the design was looking when I was making it, I was like, okay, I could do more, but I feel like it's not needing that, and I really like that design, so I'm like, I'm just going to go with that design. I did um, take a hammer and, and hammer that back plate, and I also cleaned off that back plate, so that way the solder will stick to... Um, both pieces. Sometimes it can make it a lot harder to solder if um, th whatever you're working on is dirty. Here we are just soldering. I am using extra, or no, I'm using easy solder for this. I the, You can use um, easy solder, medium, or hard, or extra easy. I like to just use easy most of the time. Um, and then that that I'm dipping it into is water and pH down. That's a common question. What I'm am I dipping it into? And then for flux, I use borax. That's the borax flux water mixture there. And then here is the design I'm doing. I was gonna do the beads at the bottom and then at the top as well, but I decided to just go with the bottom there and then. And then not do the top part. Sorry, I cut some out because it was just a hot minute in between me looking for the wire. I promise I didn't do anything special. I was just looking for that wire, that bead wire. It took me probably five minutes to find it. So we're just going to cut stuff like that out because you ain't got time for that. I don't got time for that. That's why I also sped up, sped up the videos a little bit because, one, it takes a really long time for me to upload it on YouTube and pl other platforms if it is um, really long and it also takes a long time to edit right now we're at about 19 minutes editing wise so it makes my life a little bit easier to speed it up a little bit so I hope you guys enjoy it sped up if you don't like it sped up I think there's a way you can slow it down on YouTube so you can look into that um, here I am heating it up and if you notice it's you want to kind of go all over and make sure it's red but it's not like bright bright red because you can melt that silver so it, it will just ball up and, and melt and not be able to be jewelry <laughs> so here we are just wrapping that wire around trying to get it as snug to that bezel as possible and then taking some snips and snipping it And once again, just trying to make it nice and tight. I did leave it a little longer. I'm not too worried about it being perfect because it's bead wire. You can take away some or you can add some. Um, and it does snug up close to the piece. So, uh, so sometimes you need less bead wire than expected. And you do want to make sure to be careful to... I kind of heat... I'm kind of heating from one side, not all around, because if you're heating on, say, the right side, which I am here, and then you go, you heat too much on the left side and it's not soldered down, it can actually melt that bead wire. 
Um, and once again, you want to keep moving the heat. And it did break here, so that took a little maneuvering, and then it broke even more. And I mess up too. We're not all perfect, right? <laughs> So I'm just maneuvering that around, trying to get it, it's actually soldered down, I'm trying to get it unsoldered, and it falls off the desk, and, you know, I have to reheat it, but I got, grabbed my third hand and had that hold it down, because it was moving around a lot as I was trying to get it unstuck. And then I believe, yeah, a little piece broke off, and then some of it melted. Things like that will happen, and as you can see, I'm just kind of pushing that bead wire in there and getting it where I want it to. I like to try to solder it from one side and then kind of push the other side, and that helps solder it down. And then I'm going to quench it here in a second, and then I will cut a little piece to go in there and, re and solder that. And that actually matched up pretty good. I was pretty surprised. It was kind of the perfect amount. So here's where I'm measuring it to cut it. A little snip snip. I love when it works out like that. <laughs> and then we're just gonna solder that little piece down Get my big head out of the way. <laughs> I was trying to film a TikTok video as I was doing this, so that's why I keep moving the camera around a little bit to get different angles. I was kind of filming a little bit more in my hand than I would have liked. I would have liked for it to, you know, be closer to what we're working on. I do have to be a little careful that it doesn't overheat my phone as well because the torch does get really hot. And then quenching it. We always want to quench. We don't want to get our hands hot and burned and all the good stuff. I burned myself last week and it did not feel good. Just cutting that extra silver off. I try to get as close as I can. I don't like using the little saws. I like just snipping as much as I can. And then I just use a Dremel and clean it up. There's obviously different ways of doing things, and this is just my preferred way of doing it. So, whatever you feel more comfortable with is what I suggest you doing. <laughs> so, here we are just making sure to sand it off. I do like to try to get the little edges to make sure that it's not sharp and yeah, no one's going to be hurting themselves on what we're working on. Here I'm cleaning up the back, and it's kind of the same idea as when I was doing the bezel. Just cleaning up that back so that way when I, was, I wasn't I was sure if I was going to make it into a pendant or if I was going to make it into a ring, and right there is when I decided I was going to make it into a ring. So I was cleaning the back so that way we could make sure to it will stick to the band well and not have any issues with it not wanting to solder down correctly. So here we have the band that we're going to be using. I really like this decorative wire. It's really pretty. I, this I purchased from Rio Grande. I don't know the item number. If you guys purchase my starter kit, I do have all the wire numbers and all that um, in there. So you can look up the different decorative wires that I use. I don't know this one off the top of my head. Here we're just soldering. I'm using Easy Solder. So I did solder this down and then I decided that it was off a little bit. So we're gonna turn around, look at it, inspect it. I think I quenched it and then I did, oh, no, maybe I didn't. Um, I decided to just go ahead and um, reheat it and just move it a little bit and just a little tap and then I did like it that second time so then we're gonna go ahead and clean it up set the stone all the good stuff clench it dry it off 
I like to put it on my finger and make sure that it is sitting correctly. And then I do like to put it in the mandrel on the mandrel and straighten that band out just to make sure that it's sitting correctly as well. This ring is sitting at a size seven. Looking good. I really love how this ring turned out. It was so pretty. I'm getting fancy with the torch. And if you guys want to know how to make little balls out of silver, you just put heat on them and they ball right up. So that's kind of what I was showing there, a little example. So you guys know how to do that as well. And here we are setting the stone. I like to put a little bit of glue behind my stones just to help prevent it from wiggling around. Um, it's not really per to prevent the stone from falling out. It's just because a lot of people go, oh my gosh, my stone's wiggling, it's going to come out. Where really that bezel, when we push that bezel over, that's what helps keep that stone in. It's just really to prevent wiggling around. Then we put a little bit of fairy dust behind the stone. Just kidding, it's sawdust. Um, the sawdust is to lift that stone up so it's the height that we want it um, without having to sit there and sand the bezel down. It also helps to protect that stone if you have solder behind it and you're trying to set the stone. It can cause the stone to break because you're pushing a rock against metal. And then, what's the other thing? Um, oh, if you hit the ring against something, it kind of gives it a little bit of cushion as well. So that way um, it has a little bit of padding behind that stone. And then we're just pushing that um, bezel around the stone. You can really hold it however feels comfortable to you, but I kind of like holding it at that an, a nice angle and in, um, in my palm with my, like, my hand down and going that way. I don't know how to explain it, really. You can kind of see how I'm holding it, though. <laughs> um, my wrist was kind of hurting today, so I took the hammer and was kind of using it that way. I do tap the stone sometimes. I'm very lightly tapping it. Like I could, I'm holding it with like my two fingers and barely tapping it. Um, you do not want to hit the stone hard because it will break the stones. But yeah, just pushing that bezel around. Sometimes it takes a little bit more force and it does slide and slip and stuff like that. If you didn't notice there, it slid a couple times off the, off of where I was pushing. So and then next here, we're just going to clean it up. I love these little polishing pads. Or they're not polishing pads. They're like um, kind of rough little pads. I don't know what, exactly what they are. But these stones, I do not finish them on my cab machine because they are really soft. So these are an abrasive like brush that I'm using on the Dremel. And then I, I am going over that stone quite a bit because I did not finish that stone. Um, I just shaped it on the cab machine, and then I'm using this here to finish it. I just find that it just takes a lot less time, and then it, it polishes up really well. So, um, the cab machine, I notice, is just way too aggressive for shaping that stone. Um, it leaves a lot of little, like, it doesn't make it as nice. It's kind of harder to explain. It's a really, really soft stone. Um to shape but it's once it's shaped it's a nice sturdy stone if that makes sense and then um just making sure that bezel is nice and tight there's a few spots that were a little bit um, wonky needed to be set just a little bit better here i'm using liver of sulfur and then putting it on the stone and that's just to blacken um, the design work basically going all the way around the ring and then after I put the liver of sulfur on it we will be putting it in baking soda and water that is to neutralize what we're working on so that neutralizes it right there drying it off I like to do that before polishing it because if you polish it and then do it you're just not gonna have to repolish it basically this is another abrasive um, uh, Dremel accessory, I don't know. Uh, I'm just going on that stone a little bit more. There was a few little scratches, so I was just trying to get those out of it. I noticed it once I 
um, got done. This is um, a finer a Dremel accessory, I don't know. You could leave it at a matte look with these also. It doesn't have to be polished. I personally always polish everything because over time it kind of, I feel like, turns to matte <laughs> looking. But it's crazy how just a little bit of polish really cleans it up. Look how fast that cleans it up. So just making sure to go all the way around the ring. And then, especially with this stone, because I didn't finish it, this is my me polishing that stone. So I am making sure to polish that better. I do not do this with any other type of stone. This is the only stone that I do this with. It's just so you guys know. Um... Anything else, I always um, finish it on the cab machine. This is a man-made stone also. It's not um, a natural stone. So that's another reason I uh, do it this way as well. Every stone's different. Every, you know, it just you got to kind of do things that works for you and what you're working with. I'm just making sure to go all the way and polishing it. I am using Fabuluster to polish. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the pa polishing pads are called. I think they're like the cotton ones that are pretty fluffy. If you get the um, silver smoothing kit, they're in that. Try to include all that kind of stuff so you guys can see and feel what they look like. This is actually the same type of polishing pad, it's just more worn down, so it kind of gets in there a little bit more tight. And then after this step here, we're going to wash it with soap and water and get all the gunky stuff off from the Fabuluster um, polishing compound. And if you guys are part of my Cabochon subscription kit, um, these guys are going to be in it this month. So if you want to make a ring like this, you'll be able to if you are part of the Cabochon subscription. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching. We will see you guys next time.